Pastor Calhoun. Yeah, I was wondering if you could, um, Chris, speak at all to the um, public relations strategy and how we think of that as a corporation in terms of a project that has a 10 year you know, plan and um, media asking all of us different questions and kind of trying to create stories on where each of us stand. And like, I could just see us having a strategy being a very effective tool that we all sort of get behind as a council, um, as staff to talk about it um, and what we're doing. Um, so we're all on the same page. I'd be, like, is that a, something that a city would do is to have a strategy that we all can get behind for something like that? Worship through members of council. That's a topic that uh, SMT, for those that don't know, SMT senior management team for the audience. Um, that it's it's been a topic of discussion uh, weekly. We have weekly meetings. Uh, it comes up uh, quite a bit in terms of where we're going with public relations and and government relations. And um, that's why the the new position or the new director of uh, corporate services was uh, was established to consolidate a lot of those departments and have an oversight in terms of where we're going with next step. Because as I as you recall, there's a lot of internal and external facing departments within that uh, portfolio now. And and I it will be coming forward. I we have discussed it. We know there. Um, it is needed uh, in, in certain regards. Um, it's just how do we come up with the strategy and what are the deliverables from that strategy? Uh, just going out and saying, well, we need to do this is not that strategic, obviously. Um, and that's why we've come together as SMT to understand that is a, an opportunity for, um, it's, it's an opportunity. Uh, so, is that one of the roles was a communications person as well in that new correct. Um, department? Correct. And so that person would maybe also create um, some sort of guide or strategy for council along with staff on how, because I'm just thinking of like something like Centennial Park that happened, um, you know, it felt like staff was here, council was here, and, and the public is here, and everybody's on different pages, and we're coming up to spending $20, 30000000 million over the next 10 years, and I can just see the exact same thing happening where it's just public perception is very different than what is actually happening. Um, and so I can see that uh, having somebody who is kind of um, proactively pr making a plan for us to be able to communicate those kinds of big projects that, that we are actually taking on uh, would being a good thing for that person to have on their job description. Okay, but let's make it clear though. Um, staff can have all the strategies on the world on communication. That's a good, good thing. Every member of this council has a right to take a contrary position and to voice their opinion. And I'm not going to go back and, and use the Centennial Park, but it, it's probably the best example. Um, I expect each of you to voice your opinions on major issues and not to be told this is what you must say. It, it, again, it's just a fundamental belief I've had my entire political life. It's helpful if staff want to give you some talking points, and if you believe in that, go for it. But again, and we will have these issues in the future when we're spending big money. Pastor Calhoun, if you don't agree with that, then you can then voice that opinion. We've got to keep that in mind. And I do think it's good to always have a communication strategy, but for council, you're all your own communicators when it's all said and done. Anyhow, um, well, that's a lousy editorial comment there. I'm going to look for a motion to adjourn. Yeah, there's some comments I'd like to make. Council, this is... I'm sorry, who's that? Tim? Councillor Colhoun. Yeah, okay, please go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to take this time to state some things regarding the COVID-19 situation we are in. Uh, seeing everyone in the city and county pulled together has been a great sight. It is working. Everyone in the city has done an excellent job at flattening the curve. The frontline workers that I have spoken with and ones that I have not have been committed and excellent in their profession. The service workers have kept our city chugging along and all around the city as a whole has really displayed courage and solidarity. In an unprecedented state of emergency like we're in right now, it's imperative that everybody considers themselves on the same team. The leadership, the city staff, the police, the bylaw officers, the workers, the youth, those experiencing homelessness, those that are raising kids on their own, the elderly, we're all in this together. And when I say that we are all in this together, I mean that we cannot devolve into thinking of this in terms of sides. There is not safe people and unsafe people. There is not those that care and those that don't. There is not enforcement and those being enforced. There is not sick and there is not healthy. We have to try to avoid both extremes. And this means not defaulting to fear and panic, but also not being careless. Imagine getting a $300 fine for a parking ticket in an accessible parking spot when you didn't see the signs and the parking lot is empty and you had no idea and you had a conversation with the officer and begged them to show you mercy and they, for whatever refuse, reason, refused to. That's an example of 
when we've gone too far in the wrong direction. Just a few days ago, an 85 year old woman was about to be fined $800 when unplanned by her, her family decided to have social distancing birthday stopped by at her house, all in different cars and keeping six feet away. Yes, there was more than five people and yes, they probably should have stayed in their cars and taking turns going out, but they were practicing distancing and were really only there for a few minutes. When one of the family members realized the grandma was gonna get fined, he begged the officer to give it to him instead. So now there's an $800 fine. Oh, Councillor Calhoun, I'm going to have to cut you off here. You're talking about a legal matter that can be taken into the courts. Okay, I'll move. I thought you had a general statement, which was upbeat and all I that. I do. I'm almost done, which leads me to the boat ramp. I've heard so many apparent reasons why our boat ramp is closed from citizens trying to support our efforts in stopping the spread of the virus. But the only messaging I've heard from the city is that a lot of other municipalities are doing it. But I'm not aware of any larger ruling bodies that have ordered it closed. And now there's a group of 500 boaters discussing how to get this back open, including a planned protest. These kinds of situations have given us pause and forces us to ask why we are making the decisions we are, and the citizens of Starnia deserve to know the rationale behind these decisions. There are other similar closures that have happened, like not allowing bonfires and putting up closed signs at parks that are actually open, which never had the accompanying rationale and I'm coming to my finale here. Trust between the city of Sarnia and the citizens of Sarnia is what is going to be either strained or strengthened because of this pandemic. Excessively cautious and fearful leadership and policies are revealing unfortunate realities at where this trust is at. I think there is still time to restore this trust and start implementing our policies in such a way that still encourage safe behavior, trusting that the majority of people are being cautious and inviting the citizens of Sarnia to being safe from a position of working together and not forcing something onto them. So with that said, I call on our emergency management team and the mayor to consider following amendments to our COVID-19 policies. One, reopen the boat launch with cautionary guidelines put in place for all users. Two, remove the policy of no bonfires. Three, remove all signs that say closed at our parks and replace them with signs that say open with an explanation of what is restricted at the park. Quinn Edward has done a good job with their signage on this. Four, open the beaches with social distancing guidelines communicated clearly. And five, immediately end retributive enforcement of fines and switch to a double warning system for all offenders. Thank you. I appreciate your comments, Councillor Calhoun. It would have been appropriate to give notice. The primary control group has been working for 30, 40 days, every day, seven days a week. Never once have I heard from you. I hear about your social media posts. I do understand you're going to apologize for one publicly that you posted this past week. And that's why I was cautioning you on the legal matter. You could be taken into court because of some of the things you've posted. And we're trying to protect you. The decisions made by the primary control group are decisions that are made to protect the residents of the city. We are under a state of emergency, the city of Sarnia. The province of Ontario is under a state of emergency. And we're doing what we can in the areas that we have control. And by the way, we don't control the beaches. That was a provincial order, just as it was with the park amenities. And we don't control what stores are open or not. We're trying to do what we can. Because people have a choice. They can either distance six feet or they can be six feet under. And it's easy to, to play to the crowd. It's easy to play to the mob and say, well, they shouldn't have done that. But we're trying to protect people. Go over to Landmark Village. Go over to Landmark Village and try to truly understand what's happened to people and the people that are still struggling with the illness there. So are we perfect? No, but we're making decisions every day because we care about the people in this community and we're trying to protect them. And if some don't want to listen to that message, well, the alternative may be death. And again, never once has the primary control group heard from you with any concerns. I've heard from other counselors, we pass those concerns on. I daily send probably 20 emails to the primary control group from citizens concerned about issues or with input. And we listen and we debate it. The boat ramp issue, that debate went on for weeks before we decided almost 60 to 80 boat ramps have been closed in this province. Michigan's closed the mall, New York State's closed the mall. It was time to do it, mainly because we don't have the ability staff-wise to speed down there 18 hours a day trying to get people to social distance. So I would have appreciated notice on your comments and I will defend the primary control group. They have worked day and night, seven days a week for the last five weeks 
And the only thing they care about is the people of this city. Yeah, gonna... and yeah, thank, thank you for your purchase. comments, Mayor. I received them. And so I'll send my um, note off to you and the primary control group, and you can consider that. Um, this wasn't meant to say that you're not trying and you're not doing a great job. It's just challenging some of the decisions that haven't been made, and my challenge stands. One comment, Your Worship, if I can. One comment. Well, I'm not going to really... let that that go because what we have done, I mean, it's easy to challenge on social media. And I understand, again, you've apologized for some of your posts. But what you're doing here is creating an issue to brought attention to yourself. This is about the community and trying to make this community get through this. And so we can get people back to work. We can get them healthy again and make this a better place, the place it was two months ago. So I don't mind criticism, but what I do mind is being blindsided. Never once again have you communicated to us, and you've had lots of time, and social media is not the way to communicate with a group. So with that, Councillor Bushi. Uh, I, I just